Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Now, I said as part of my operation read 100 books in 2020, for the first time ever, <laughs> I would be doing uh, a few videos in January, a few vlogs to help me reach that goal. And the first of which is today, and as you can probably tell by the title, it's uh, reading my first graphic novels. I've never read any graphic novel ever, ever, ever. And I really want to, I've always really wanted to, but I just never got around to it. I never got around to buying any because I was always like, oh, they're expensive for uh, like what they are. But I bit the bullet and I've collected three and I'm going to be reading them all today, hopefully, in between doing uni work. So I'll show you quickly what they are. So we are going to be reading The Prince and the Dressmaker by Jen Wang. Laura Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me by Mariko Tamaki and Rosemary Valero O'Connell. And Heartstopper by Alice Oseman. So I'm going to read them all throughout the day, hopefully. I think I should be able to get through all of these throughout the today, right? Like I, I have no reference for how long it takes to read graphic novels. <laughs> But I feel like I should be fine. So we went very pink. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, oh, wow. I was obviously like, if I'm reading a graphic novel, it has to be pink. But at least they kind of match, right? You know? So I think, I think I'm going to start with Heartstopper. We'll go through the synopses of all of them as we go along. All I know about this is it's Boy Meets Boy. It's set in the UK, I'm pretty sure, in like a secondary school. It's by Alice Oseman, who I've really enjoyed uh, Radio Silence, and I was born for this by her. So I feel pretty good about this. I feel like this is the safest bet out of all of them, but this is the one that isn't any, there's no colour, it's all black and white the others are in some form of color which is interesting so yeah I need to go take Tom out to an appointment and I need to wait outside for the hour so I'm gonna take this and I feel like I can probably read it in that hour so let's go do that <laughs> So I'm here for the next hour and so I yeah I think I'll be able to finish this the next hour I actually I was thinking about this on the drive and I haven't vlogged just like properly in the way that I enjoy I think that like you guys enjoy for me as well in like a long time I feel like I haven't done that because I did the London video and then I've been doing another vlog which you would have seen already which was my um, Norwich City players pick my TBR or however I titled it which I'll link up above um, but that was over like a long stretch of time because I didn't like one of the books so I'm excited today to just vlog for the whole day woohoo <laughs> do you know what honey see you later take care my love Call me a cab. Excuse my hair. It's been in a bun for a whole day and it's whew, got a mind of its own, but I'll be washing it tonight. I was in a bit of a rush, so I don't think I spoke about this enough. I've spoken about it in my Christmas book haul and I said, I think these two guys meet at school. I believe one's in year 10 and one's in year 11. A majority of you are American. So for reference, our year 10 is your first year of high school. So they're, yeah. Fair, okay that's correct right i think so yeah our year 10 is your first year of high school and then we have year 10 and 11 which are our last years of high school and then your final two years are our years 12 and 13 which are like college or sixth form which you can go to a different place to do so like i did high school in one place and then i moved to a different school for sixth form and that's where i met tom at sixth form for reference so that's where we're at. But yeah, I'm going to start this now. I'm so excited, right? I've got I've got an hour to fill, so good thing I'm excited. And um, yeah, I'll just check back in with you uh, if I have any thoughts throughout it. And if not, I'll just check in with you at the end. Oh, the mic is going to be terrible because I'm not filming on, I'm filming it on the camera mic. But um, I just went on Goodreads to edit and it's got a 4.58 average rating. Yo, that is like the highest... That's such a good rating, isn't it? Wow. Wow. Okay, I'm even more excited to read it now. So cute! <laughs> oh, I'm only 30 pages in. <laughs> okay. 
video. <laughs> I just physically, I just laughed out loud. <laughs> Right, okay, I'm on page 124. The thing is with reading this book, I feel like I'm connecting to it uh, so much. It's set at an all-boys grammar school in the UK. And when I, what I was talking about earlier, so I went to an all-girls school from year 7 to 11 high school. And then for sixth form, I moved to an all-boys grammar school, but they allow girls in the sixth form for the last two years. I feel like I just know the characters. Do you know what I mean? Like Nick and Charlie, I feel like I've met those boys and I feel like I know what the attitude to gay people is often like in an all-boys grammar school. Um, I've seen that kind of... The, the homophobic uh, nature of those schools um, firsthand, right? So I just feel like I know these people and so it's just so touching to read about and that kind of awkward initial bit of a high school relationship where you're like, I don't know if he likes me, kind of thing. I mean, I've been there. <laughs> kind of texting phase where you're like skirting around whether you like each other. <laughs> But I laughed out loud because they're in PE. The PE teacher says, take that hat off to one of the guys. And he goes, but sir, it's freezing. And the PE teacher goes, this is England, not Antarctica. Deal with it. God, it just reminds me of UK PE teachers. <laughs> they are all like that. There is so much in here. Like the little of my cement poster signs. Like it's just taking me back. Like it's so cool to read as someone from the UK. Like... It's so vividly, especially because of the visual cues, which you wouldn't necessarily get in a in a written book of a UK secondary school. Like, it's just really drawing me in, and it feels so vivid to me, because I feel like I know where I am. Oh, but yeah, those PE teachers get to stand there in, you know, a coat, scarf, gloves, <laughs> and you have to run around in, like, these freezing shorts. <laughs> God, took me back. Anyway, I'm going to carry on. I'm shut up um i'm in love with it i'm in love with the story and yeah it's great <laughs> i just finished it and uh <laughs> i'm gonna collapse no i don't i feel faint i have struck gold lady uh, ah, i need number two straight away oh my god i'm gonna I'm gonna cry. <laughs> oh my god! I... <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> oh my god. Five stars. Five stars. Ten million stars. Oh my god, the way it, the ending. That's not fair. No. Okay, I need it right now. I need to get number two right now. Okay, so the premise of this is we have Charlie, who is out as gay at secondary school, and Nick, who is uh, straight. Everyone thinks he's straight. He thinks he's straight. But then through his friendship with Charlie, he starts to question it, and they kind of fall for each other. So... It was just so heartbreaking. <laughs> Not heart stopper. <laughs> heartbreaking. Heartwarming. Heart oh, guys. No, okay. I need to get chill for a second and to be serious. This is such a wonderful graphic novel. And obviously it was my first experience with a graphic novel. I, I loved the visual elements of this. I loved their facial expressions. I loved the little clues she had throughout of... Uh, like certain symbols or stuff would relate to a certain mood that they were in and it was just so touching and like I said I think it really helped me having gone to a UK secondary school not even that long ago like I was in a grammar an all boys grammar school two years ago you know I felt like I a knew these characters and b knew the setting and I think the setting is actually quite important like the type of people you're going to be meeting here and the type of attitudes people there are going to have and just the kind of social environment I felt like I was right back in secondary school in that kind of social environment I this made me really want to pick up solitaire as well because I believe they are characters like minor characters 
in Solitaire, which is the only novel by Alice Oseman I haven't read. So I want to read that really soon. And this was just so touching. It was just so touching. And I'm so glad I own it physically because I want to read this like every month. Like I literally could reread this every month. And it's just like the best. I love how she used the layouts and kind of like the page formatting to show us things as well like as they would break apart there'd be something on the page breaking apart not necessarily them like if they had to go separate ways or something there would be something to signify how they feel torn apart or something like that i thought that was a really imaginative way of using the format everyone raves about this i mean everyone kind of raves about all the graphic novels i'm gonna be reading in this video but i think this one the most and i can already say go pick this up go pick it up because it was just incredible. It was so good. I want to reread it straight away. Like, <laughs> I'm like, do I have to read the other ones or can I just read this? Because, yo, it was so good. Going into this, I was like, I'm so excited to you know, get loads of books where I feel really good about myself. I'm excited to read graphic novels for the first time. But now I'm just like, just so happy. And it's, but the ending, <sighs> Alice Oseman, what are you doing to me? <laughs> you know, I need to get the second one straight away now. Oh my god, just so good. Five out of five stars. Without a doubt, five out of five stars. It was just incredible. So I'm going to go home now. Tom should be out in like five minutes. So I'm going to go home and do some uni work and then make lunch. And I'll probably read my next one after I've made lunch. So I will catch up with you at some point when I'm home. Adult horror, weird Lighting looks a bit makeshift. I couldn't be bothered for this two minute clip to like set it up properly, so I had lunch. <laughs> I tried, I was supposed to film my lunch for you that I actually had, but I started eating it too fast. So here's a clip after I was halfway through, and then I did some work as you would have just seen. And I'm gonna take a break from work now. I'm feeling so tired. Do you ever have that thing when you are staring at the computer screen and you're just like you just can't get your eyes to focus properly on it that's me right now but a bitch has too much to do to give in so um we're gonna read our next graphic novel and i think next i'm gonna pick up the prince and the dressmaker by jen wang i am very excited to get into this all i know about it is i think the prince wants to wear like dresses in secret and so it's him and the girl who makes him dresses. That's all I know about it. I don't know anything about it other than that. But I love the kind of artwork design in it. Oh, I just can't wait to get into reading this. So I'm going to go downstairs and pick this up. I need to get some cat content in this vlog as well because I'm going home soon and we have hardly gotten any cat content. Content. What a hard cat content in the <laughs> videos. So we'll see if there's any down there that we can bamboozle. And yeah, I'm just gonna go give this a read and I will update you with some thoughts in a little bit. I am nervous for this because it's one of the ones Tom bought me in the London vlog, if you haven't seen that already. And I just feel so much pressure to like the books that he gets me because he usually has a good track record, so we shall see. <laughs> Yeah, he looks like he wants to cuddle me. Do you want to cuddle me? Do you want to cuddle me? What's up there? Mm -hmm. yeah. No, She's you. all wet too. Why are you guys all wet? You sweaty? I don't mean up to something. You sweaty? There you go. Look, it's a lap. I don't know if they can see her. You it's, a, it's a lap they, and a blanket. Can they see? She doesn't want to be seen. <laughs> Say hello. You've got to sit like that though. Well, I'm just, I'm just showing them and her. <laughs> she's not very happy with me. They've seen her now. They know she's here. Like that, look. She goes, bloop, bloop. She's going to get go. pissed off and go. Bloop. I'm having a lovely afternoon. It's nice, isn't it? Hello. So I finished The Prince and the Dressmaker. Ta-da! Um, sorry I didn't update you like halfway through with any thoughts. I just kind of read it the whole way through and didn't have anything concrete, I guess, like I did with Heartstopper to update you on. I'm gonna give this four stars. I still really, really enjoyed it. I think it's a great graphic novel. Is that something you wanna try out? But 
there just wasn't anything like there was in Heartstopper that really made me so emotional, you know, or made me really, really feel something. I felt like I really enjoyed the general plot and, you know, the prince uh, finding themselves and discovering their true uh, identity, I guess, and the whole exploration of that. I loved. I'm out of breath for some reason. <laughs> there was no one-liners or plot moments that really made me go like, oh, 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 do you know what I mean? It was kind of just, not. I don't want to say one note throughout, but it kind of was one feeling I had towards it throughout. Um, and I think that's probably because with Heartstopper, it's a very small section of the story, if you get what I mean. Like, we followed them for a very short period of time and the point in which the story in which we leave them, uh, we are aware that there's going to be a lot more of a story to come, whereas this is all one story. And so it kind of felt to me like the whole plot was just kind of squeezed in a little bit rather than spaced out in the way maybe she was, Alice Oseman was able to do with Heartstopper. But on the whole, I cannot tell you how happy I am that I've done this video. Like I said, I was coming into it just kind of going, <laughs> of books and feel great about myself. I used, I remember at the beginning of last year I was watching people like Ariel Bissett, who actually I picked this up on her recommendation, uh, two of these in fact, on her recommendation, and I think I remember her saying she wanted to read a hundred books in a year, and that was unfathomable to me. Like I could not understand how anyone could ever read a hundred books. That was just like, pfft, like mind does not understand, do you know what I mean? But now I'm actually contemplating being able to do it, and so it just, to me, evidences how far my reading journey has come in just a year. And it makes me really happy. But in terms of graphic novels, I <laughs> love the reading experience of graphic novels. As someone at the moment who is studying at university and I've got a lot of assessments at the moment, as I've spoken about a lot, I'm doing a lot of dense reading. So even when I'm not necessarily reading a book, I'm reading the rest of the day, just, you know, uh, academic papers and stuff like that. And it's tough on the brain. Your brain is like... <laughs> and I guess when you're doing something like that, you don't want to be reading something super heavy. And what I'm loving about the graphic novels is how much they tell through the visuals. I mean, I know that's kind of the point. I love how what we see through facial expressions and what we see through body language and and just the, the different ways that the artists manage to tell things in the story is just... I, I just love the reading experience. So... Um, I can't wait to read the last one and then I can't wait to read more graphic novels this year. I kind of wish, I mean I shouldn't say too much right now because I should save some of this for the final thoughts, but um, I kind of wish I had <laughs> saved some of these to just read throughout the year. I mean this is a great day, great reading experience day, but I'm like, I'm not going to have any more <laughs> graphic novels to read after this. What am I going to do? I did tell myself, Megan... You're gonna, you know, you need to go and <laughs> do do some reading, some uni reading between now and your next read. It's currently about half five, I think, and um, yeah, I I need to have a bath tonight, <laughs> wash my hair, and I was like, oh, do more two more readings, like for for uni before you start the last one. But I don't know if my brain wants me to, to be quite honest. So we'll see. I'm either gonna pick. Laura Dean keeps breaking up with me up straight away. Or I'll do a little bit of readings. Maybe I'll do one reading. Interesting. If any of you are at uni, can you relate? So as you can see, I have now pajamaed up. <laughs> yeah, I just had dinner and got into my pajamas. Your girl didn't do any more work, so. But I'm gonna go get in the bath and start Laura Dean keeps breaking up with me. I reckon I could probably finish it in the bath. I usually I'm having a bath. I'm treating myself because when I'm back up at uni, I don't have a bath. I only have a shower at my flat. So it's going to be one of my last ones before I go back. <laughs> so yeah, I reckon I can get through most, if not all of it. And if I don't get through all of it, I'll just finish it when I get back into bed and either update you tonight or in the morning, probably tonight, just so we can keep it all in one day. And yeah, let's go get in the bath. <laughs> Last night I finished Laura Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me and uh, I didn't update last night because it was quite late but 
I gave it a 4.5 stars. Probably, I wrote 4.5 on Goodreads, but it probably is just more like a 4 upon reflection and having removed myself from the book of it. Um, again, I really enjoyed it. I think I preferred it to The Prince and the Dressmaker, so maybe like a 4.25 kind of thing, if we're getting really specific. <laughs> the highlight of this for me was the friendship group around Freddy, who is the one who Laura Dean keeps breaking up with. I loved the friends in this book. They were really the highlight for me and I felt like they were so well fleshed out in such a short amount of time. And similar to Heartstopper, what they did very well in this book was the facial expressions and the body language really shone through. The thing is, obviously there are people like Laura Dean who treat their partners or the people they're linked romantically with like rubbish, but to me, Laura Dean just didn't feel real, you know? In the way that all the other characters in this felt real. She kind of felt like a caricature. And at first I was thinking, well, you know, I needed an explanation for why she did what she did. And then I, you don't need that. Some people are just not nice, right? <laughs> but she just didn't feel fleshed out in the way that all the other characters did. She seemed like, oh, I don't know how to describe it, like a poster of a person. Do you understand what I mean? And maybe that's because in Freddie's head, and we were in kind of Freddie's head, she's like this idealised being. So maybe it's to do with that. But I loved the art style in this. I thought the art style was top tier. Probably my favourite art style out of all of them. I loved Doodle, who's one of her really close friends. Like, obsessed. Obsessed. So, on the whole, I really loved this. I would love to um, read more stuff by these authors. And I have discovered a love for graphic novels in this video. <laughs> I'm definitely going to be rereading Heartstopper soon. I think when I get number two, I'll reread number one again. Because Heartstopper, although when you look at it, you're like, oh, it's just grey. Do you know what I mean? I feel like, and maybe even the most basic drawing style, I felt like it just hit me hardest, you know? it In terms of the story, it hit me the hardest. So this video was a success. <laughs> I loved it. I loved reading all of these graphic novels and I, I can't wait to read some more this year. If any of you have any recommendations that uh, of graphic novels that are similar to any of these, please let me know down below. I know of a few that I've heard people talk about a lot, like Bloom or Sheets I've heard good things about. So maybe I'll look into those next. But I am obsessed with graphic novels. I think they're like the best thing ever. And I mean, what I really appreciated, another thing I should say about Laura Dean Keeps Breaking Up For Me was that I think this is the first female female romance I've ever read. As a woman, I sometimes feel like there's in literature, especially, there's a big focus on male-male romances, right? And the sun has just gone away, so I feel like I should open this up again. Yeah, okay, fine. <laughs> we'll just hide down here. Um, yeah, a big focus on male-male romances, and I think as a woman, I want to be careful not to, like, fetishise that, because I think sometimes... I don't know, I just don't think there's enough of emphasis on female-female romances. And so I loved reading this and I want to read more female female romances this year. That was always one of my goals. Um, so again, if anyone has any good recommendations for that, please let me know. But I loved this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, and again, yeah, let me know if you have any graphic novel recommendations. It's so pleasing to me that they're all pink as well. I need to go take an Instagram picture for these at some point. I'm not taking the thumbnail now. Do that in a couple of days when I got makeup on again. <laughs> Because, I can you imagine if you saw this in the thumbnail? <laughs> Woo! I'll see you very, very soon. Thank you for watching. Bye. <laughs>